now let's move on to the concept of conductors so what is conductors conductors are nothing but the materials that conduct heat quickly all metals are considered to be examples of good conductors of heat copper is considered to be one of the very good example of good conductor of heat and some more examples of conductors are pans that are used for cooking are usually made with a copper or aluminium bottom and with some kind of plastic handles so these are some of the examples of conductors so now let's see about insulators insulators are also said to be called as power conductors the materials that conduct heat slowly or poorly are called as insulators some of the examples of insulators are glass wood plastic and rubber which are power conductors so obviously it is good insulators nearly all liquids including water are poor conductors gases including air are poor conductors an example for that is a wool which feels warm because it traps a lot of air so a wool and wood are some of the examples of insulators Insulators are nothing but a non-conducting material. Let's see about it even more clearly. So you can see the energy level of metals and insulators. In quantum physics, an atom in a box displays this continuous energy level. When the number of atoms is increased, more levels appear. until an energy band is formed you can see the energy level over here in a metal the atoms share some of some of some of their electrons their energies fill the band from the bottom these electrons can move easily this allows the metal to have the property and apart from this when the energy band is completely filled the electrons became The electrons become very difficult to move. The material no longer conducts electric current. So this is said to be called as insulator. So you can see the energy level depiction over here which has been done in the GTEC laboratory for the experimentation of metals and insulators. Now let's talk about emitters. A thing which emits something is called as emitters. Hotter objects emit that is it gives out heat. Different surfaces emits heat at different speeds. You can see some examples over here. A dull black surface loses energy more quickly. The reason behind this is nothing but it is considered to be a good radiator. A bright shiny or white surface is considered to be a poor radiator. Some other examples are the marathon runners. The marathon runners need to keep warm at the end of race by covering in shiny blankets. obviously it reduces the radiation and therefore the heat it's getting to be lost over there so these are some of the examples you can see a emitting stream over here which is emitting something
Now let's talk about the emitters of heat. You can see over here the bright shiny which is considered to be the poor radiator have been taken here and this one is nothing but the dull black one which is a kind of good radiator. You can see this emits poor radiation whereas this emits good radiation. You can see the difference over here. The radiation has been marked in arrow marks. And this one seems to be the cool fluid drops and here if you check out you can find the heated fluid rises. When it is heating up after reaching some certain level you can see the fluid drops in cool state. Let's see about observers. The cooler objects observe that is it takes in the heat. Observers are nothing but the thing which observes something. Substances observe heat at different speeds. Dull black surfaces observe heat quickly whereas bright shiny surfaces observe heat slowly. In hot countries people wear bright white clothes and paint their houses white. This is all because of the reason to reduce the absorption of energy from the sun. Petrol storage tanks spread silver. This is nothing but a prevention mechanism or a kind of protective one in order to reflect the sun's rays. So we have a comparison again over here. So from the sun, if the rays are getting to be passed on. So this one is the shiny bright one which can obviously consider to be the poor, poor observer. Whereas the dull black one which is considered to be the good observer. So you can find the difference of which is getting to be observed more and which is getting to be observed good. Now let's move on to the concept of heating and cooling. So this is the consideration of two cycles. The first one is heat cycle that is heating cycle and the second one is cooling cycle. When we have a comparison between cooling cycle and heating cycle you can see here the outer coil is over here and here you can find the refrigerant absorbs heat from air and boils to vapor. Whereas to the contrast you can see here the refrigerant releases heat to outside air and returns to a liquid state. And you can find here the low pressure low temperature vapor which is passing through the reversing wave. But in terms of cooling cycle you can find the high pressure high temperature vapor. Once after it reaches the compressor on both the sides you can find here the direction where you can able to see the high pressure and high temperature vapor which is getting to be passed on to the inside coil. Similarly in this side you can find the low pressure and low temperature vapor which is getting to be passed on to the inside coil where you can find a fan over here. The main comparison of these two cycles are nothing but you can find the warm air inside this one whereas in terms of cooling cycle you can find the cool air inside the coil. So this is the reason of that. Refrigerant releases heat to air and returns to a liquid state. In this side you can have the sink. Refrigerant absorbs heat from air and boils to vapor. So this is all because of the heat and cool. Of the concept of heating and cooling. 
so this is the overall depiction of heating cycle and this is the overall depiction of cooling cycle you can find the expansion device over here if you see about heat energy in terms of physical science an energy transfer or an energy exchange from one system to another is said to occur when an amount of energy crosses the boundary since we know that energy transfer is also called as heat exchange the energy transfer has three kinds of properties the first one is conduction the second one is convection and the third one is radiation you can see some depiction of heat energy over here you can see how the heat energy is getting to be transferred from which direction now let's talk about conduction so what is conduction it is nothing but conduction is a kind of heat transfer by means of molecular agitation within a material without any motion of the material as a whole heat is transferred through a material by being passed from one particle to the next the particles at the warm end move faster and this then causes the next particles to move faster and so on you can see some example of conduction over here so while heating a pan you can see how the heat is getting to be traveling from the hot end it reaches the cold end so this example depiction is emphasizing about the property and phenomenon of conduction and also conduction occurs by the particles hitting each other and because of this the energy is getting to be transferred conduction can happen in solids liquids and gases and also it happens best in solid particles which is very close together and on the other hand conduction does not occur very quickly in liquids or gases so we have seen about conduction before now let's move on to convection so convection takes place in material where particles can move around inside the material some examples are liquid or gas and apart from this convection occur because an area with warm particles expands and then it becomes less dense than the cooler areas nearby so probably the warm area rises in the phenomenon of convection cooler particles fall into the space left by the warm particles and thereby convection current is getting to be set up you can see the example depiction over here so this one is the hot surface and you can see the heat is getting to be rising up where you can find the warm air once after reaching the certain level you can find the cool air so as we have depicted cooler particles fall into the space you can see left by the warm particles thereby we find the convection current over here So we have seen about convection now let's move on to radiation so radiation is a energy that comes from a source and travels through some material or through space heat radiation is also known as infrared radiation this includes electromagnetic radiation such as radio waves visible light you can see here the radio waves visible light you can see the visible light 
X-rays, you can find here X-ray. Particle radiation such as alpha, beta and neutral radiation and also acoustic radiation such as ultrasound and some kind of other sounds and seismic waves. Radiation may also refer to the energy, waves or particles being radiated. You can find here some types of radiation. You can find the radio, microwave, infrared radiation, visible radiation, ultraviolet radiation, X-ray radiation and the gamma radiation.